Welcome back. This lecture rounds out our discussion of compelled assistance for current surveillance with a quick look at the All Writs Act. As background, a writ is simply a formal legal order. And the All Writs Act provides that federal courts may issue all writs necessary or appropriate in aid of their respective jurisdictions and agreeable to the usages and principles of law. If the name and text sound old, well, that's because they are. The original version of the All Writs Act was part of the Judiciary Act of 1789. And if the name and the text sound vague, well, that's also because they are. The All Writs Act is like a Swiss army knife for the courts. It's a catch-all authority to effectuate the law. There are many different kinds of writs that deal with all sorts of scenarios, ranging from appellate review, to challenging a criminal conviction, to establishing rights in real estate. Historically, writs were very common. Now, though, the general writ authority is in disfavor. It's really only used in established or extraordinary situations. One situation where courts have turned to the All Writs Act is when effectuating warrants. When we looked at hacking warrants, I briefly mentioned the United States against New York telephone case. In that opinion, the Supreme Court permitted pen traps before the Pen Register Act was enacted. The court reasoned that Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure 41, the rule on warrants, covers all searches and seizures. It's very flexible. The Supreme Court also held that under the All Writs Act, the phone company could be required to help. So, there's a clear example of the government invoking the All Writs Act to compel assistance for electronic surveillance. Let me give a few other examples. Writs used to be used to obtain phone records before ECPO was enacted. They've also been used to obtain CCTV recordings. Outside the context of electronic surveillance, they've been used to compel handwriting exemplars and DNA samples. I want to make a quick aside that most courts address these warrant assistance issues under Rule 41 or the All Writs Act. I should note that a handful of federal courts have articulated an independent doctrine of inherent court authority. That's quite the rarity. It's not clear how the doctrine differs from the All Writs Act, so I'm not going to cover it beyond mentioning that it exists. All right, back to the All Writs Act. I want to emphasize a few features of how the authority is used to supplement a warrant. It is strictly a catch-all. It applies only if there is no statute or rule that addresses an issue. If there is any statute or rule on point, the All Writs Act is displaced. It also applies to a third party only if there's some connection to the investigation. It also applies only where a court finds it justified by extraordinary circumstances. And it applies only if compliance isn't a, quote, unreasonable burden, unquote. That's the very same wishy-washy test that one judge would have applied in United States against the company. Let me offer a few hypotheticals to get you thinking about how the All Writs Act applies to modern electronic surveillance. Suppose the government wants help hacking a device. With a warrant and a writ, could it require pushing a backdoored software update that enables access? Or could the government require disclosing a vendor's private key so the government can push its own backdoored update? What about compelling a device manufacturer to decrypt data held on a smartphone? The answer to all of these questions, once again, is maybe. These issues just haven't been litigated. The best I can offer you is the analytical framework that a court would use if presented with these issues. All right. That covers what I wanted to say about the All Writs Act. Since the law and assistance for current surveillance is so jumbled, I want to offer one final recap.
we focused on two kinds of compelled assistance. The first is a pen trap or wiretap order with an ECBA assistance order. The second is a warrant coupled with the All Writs Act's authority. For ECBA assistance, we saw three questions to ask. First, is the business covered? Second, is assistance necessary? And last, would assistance involve a minimum of interference with the communication system? On the warrant side, there are roughly four questions to ask. First, is there no statute or rule on the issue? If there is, the All Writs Act is displaced. Second, does the business have some connection to the investigation? Third, do extraordinary circumstances justify the compelled assistance? And last, is there no unreasonable burden associated with assistance? Note that there are strong parallels between these two approaches to compelled assistance. The questions aren't identical, but they are closely related. That brings to a close the material on assistance with current surveillance. In the next lecture, we're going to focus on prospective assistance and specifically the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act.